What is the higher purpose of a fully raw lifestyle? I started meditation in 1995 and um, I moved to the United States and I lived um, with some friends. They were all vegans and I was vegan and uh, they ate a lot of um, vegan uh, junk food, what we would call junk food, like hamburgers and vegan hot dogs and white bread buns and spaghetti and all that stuff. So um, I came from Germany and I was used to eating uh, fresh things, you know, uh, cooking fresh every day uh, and not uh, eating. Um, in Germany, we don't have, uh, you know, these vegan meat products and, and things like this. So. I, I was very, um, they were very tasty and very addictive when I came to United States. And very quickly, um, I started to have patches of dark colored skin in my, in my face and I couldn't go in the sun anymore. But I didn't worry about that. I was 35 uh, in 2001 and, um, and I didn't worry about it. I thought I was just getting older. Um, the reason why I uh, turned raw vegan in 2001 was because I didn't want to fall asleep in my meditation. I realized that meditation was the most important thing in my life because it brought me back together with who I truly was, with my higher self. And once we're with our higher self, what happens? We, we are the best version of ourselves we are the best version emotionally mentally and physically um, the physical part didn't play a big role for me because I knew I wasn't the body for sure I knew I had by then that I wasn't my body that I was something much much different and much um, more infinite than than the physical body once I cleaned out on raw food my meditations were more focused and I didn't fall asleep anymore when I meditated at nights. So this really sped up my spiritual progress as well. We are meant to feel blissful, we are meant to feel joyful, we are meant to be infinitely creative, uh, we are meant for so much more than we think and all this will happen on raw food when we are, we are staying fully raw. As soon as we go back to cook food, unfortunately this bliss goes away because we're not meant to be eating cooked food. Cooked food is, um, is dead and we're meant to eat live foods like all the animals. Only the humans cook their food and um, the purpose I believe, um, the introduction of cooked food to our way of life was to bring us down, to, um, to bring us down on the frequency of the lower mind. And so the lower mind has an easier time to control us. It's already easy to control us because we have no idea that we have a lower mind. So that's the first problem. We need to find out who the lower mind is, what the lower mind is and how it controls us. And um, I have a book, it's called Practicing Oneness and I'll, I'll put the link in the description, uh, which all the things that really helped me I, I put in that book and it's a series so it's a it's a long process of of overcoming the ego and not using it any longer it's not about getting rid or killing the ego because we need a personality uh, but we can still have a personality and realize that we're one with everything so but the ego is telling us that we're separate from everything and is telling us negative stuff and lies so we need to find out how the ego is controlling us. Raw food helps me to have a better connection to my true self. And my true self is indescribably uh, beautiful and infinite. It knows everything. It's infinitely creative. Uh, it's, it has the most amazing, um, the most amazing characteristics all of our higher selves has. So, um, when we connect through meditation with our higher self, we become better people. We become better in our religions. We become 
better human beings and better parents. And this was also one of my goals later on in life when I had children. I wanted to stay raw because it made me a better parent. I was more patient, I was more empathetic with my children, and I was more creative with my children. And it is, it is having fun and joy with our children that is important. It's not, um, you know, sending them off to school so we can have fun on our own and be on our own. Why would I want to do that? I want to be with my children. and But I want to enjoy every moment with my children. But how can I do that? That is the big question. And we can do that when we're one with our higher selves. Because it's the ego that wants to say, Oh, I want to have time on my, on my own. I want to go shopping. I want to look good. I want, you know, this is all the ego because our higher self knows already that we are infinitely beautiful. There is nothing we can do to make ourselves more beautiful. It doesn't matter what kind of vehicle we drive. Um, you can drive, you know, a, a, a Beetle, VW Beetle or a Jaguar. It doesn't matter what, what the car looks like from outside because we are infinitely beautiful and nothing nothing can change that so the body is just our vehicle and um, it doesn't matter what really matters is that we come back to being our true self and our true self loves to be with children their purity they're chaotic <laughs> and uh, so playing with our children, being creative with our children is part of what the higher self loves to do. And we go, when we're with our higher self, we go with the flow. We don't try to control our children so they're like us. We, uh, we find out who our children are. We find out what their... Um, what their gifts are in life and we support them with these gifts. Um, we enjoy being with them and playing with them and we are with them in the moment. So we totally forget about ourselves. Children forget about themselves. They don't, they don't um, think about how they look when they're playing with other children. They totally forget about themselves and they're totally in the moment and they're totally joyful and blissful and enthusiastic and, and exuberant. And this is who we are. So our children, they teach us that. Through meditation, we connect with our higher selves and then we can make the right decisions. We make a decision from empathy and from love and uh, we totally lose all of our fear and our worries because we know that's the ego. That's the past. This is a, our, a lower vibration that we don't want to hold inside of this temple. There are different seasons in life. This is what I realized. So when I was young and I was going out and I was dressing up and I had a lot of fun going dancing and, and being with my friends, uh, this is one season. This is the season where we are very selfish, um, where we only think about ourselves and so what is the purpose of having children you know for us it's really to become selfless to learn patience to learn empathy to think about another person more than about ourselves so this is really what I found out is the purpose of having children um, there's many many purposes but this is I think the most important purpose because the season of being a parent is very different from the season of being a young person going out and looking beautiful and, and flirting. And when we are mother, we are normally in a relationship. We have the father that helps us with our children. And so um, beauty, you know, we realize that inner beauty is what is really, really important. And uh, and being there for our children, supporting our children. This is the next season. The next season is the season of being a selfless parent. Selfless doesn't mean that we're forcing ourselves. Selfless has to come from the higher self. 
it's not from the ego. There's no control or beating up on ourselves. It has to come from inside, from the love of being with our children in the moment, of enjoying every moment of being with these beautiful, pure, amazing, creative uh, little people that teach us so much. My children taught me much more than I could teach them. Uh, they taught me unconditional love. I was changing much more rapidly being with my children than when I would have been by myself meditating. Um, meditation is a very uh, is a catalyst to grow spiritually really, really fast, but children are also catalysts to, to help us grow really, really fast. With raw food, we're not holding on to our youth. We're not holding on to a certain kind of um, weight. We're not holding on to our beauty. Uh, this is all part of, you know, we're not holding on to our car, you know. We're not all day long uh, polishing our car. Um, you know, we're here to, to grow spiritually. We're here to become one with ourselves. Uh, we're not here to polish our, 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 you know, wash our hair every day and look good and put on makeup and, and, and you know, be somebody else, put on different masks. And this is what this world is all about. So when we come back to being ourselves, I mean, there's no need for makeup. <laughs> Why put on something, you know, into our face that that destroys our skin? That's that's chemicals. And then when we wake up in the morning, our our husband says, "Oh my God, how does she look with makeup? She's a totally different person." <laughs> so you know, that's what the world is all about. That's what the ego and the vanity is all about. So makeup is part of that, and. Uh, we use makeup because we don't feel that we're beautiful, but we're infinitely beautiful. There's nothing that can make us ugly. No wrinkles, no gray hair, nothing can make us ugly because we are always going to be beautiful. Nothing can make us ugly. Uh, this is just an illusory body. That's not me. The person Melissa, this is not who I am. I'm infinitely beautiful so what happens if we're only concerned about looks um, you know what, what happens and we don't grow uh, spiritually because we are so fascinated by the material world um, you know we'll have to come back maybe we'll have to come back as ugly as Socrates so we so we realize what is really important in life Socrates was a very wise man and he was very ugly <laughs> but <laughs> He was, you know, he, he uh, realized what is really important in life. In my last life, I, um, I lost two babies in the concentration camp. In my last life, I was a gypsy woman uh, with, a, with a big gypsy family and we were all put into the concentration camp. And I, I write about this in my second book, in the second uh, the series, uh, Walking with Lions, in my second book. And I put some photographs of me, of my past life in there as well, so you can see how I looked. And we, we look very similar um, in our past lives. And we were mostly born into our families again and things like that. Uh, but past lives are not really so important. We will find out about our past lives when we meditate and when we get in contact with our higher self. We're not focusing on our past lives, on forgetting our life now. No, it will help us. When it helps us, we will get to know about our past lives. So I lost my two babies in the concentration camp. And this life, when I had children, oh my God, I was so grateful. And um, they're just the best things that ever happened to me in life. And. Uh, to be with them. That's why I homeschooled and I fed them raw food. I did everything I could to not lose my babies again because you still have that feeling inside of you what happened in a past life. You don't know why you have that feeling but this time I really took care of my children and I made them my priority. But when we could put God first and, uh, and then we get the raw food, we have so much energy, we can do anything we want and this is part of the raw food as well. We can do anything, we have so much energy and so much creativity. We are such better people that anything we want to do can happen. Uh, cook food is a blockage, it blocks us to be in contact with our true self. 
So it is for me. It is a it's a priority to be a hundred percent fully raw all the time. Why? Because I'm a better person. I'm a better mother. I can be more patient. Um, you know, uh, I'm not taunted by people's negative comments or, or things like that. I know it's all about love. So in this life, what is really important for me is to be unconditional loving, to be infinitely patient, to have empathy with others. So because this is who we truly, truly, truly are, we are 100% love. We have 100% consciousness. We know everything already. We just have to get in contact with this knowing. It's all there. And it's, it's the, you know, the hive mind, the ego, that keeps us from it. But it's just, it's nothing evil. The ego is not evil. It is a tester. It tests us. What do you really want? Do you want the world or do you want your true self? So, you know, God is hiding behind the creator is hiding behind this beautiful veil like a beautiful woman who doesn't want to show herself she has a veil in front of her face and when we really really truly love the creator and our higher self we will be able to see him in in, our, in, in meditation and the veil will lift for a second and this is when we see the inner light and the inner, you know we see the inner vistas and um, yeah, we just have to practice. It's like driving a car. Meditation is like driving a car. Some people say, oh, I can't meditate. My mind is really busy. Yeah, that's the lower self. That's your ego who is really busy and tries to keep you from going beyond the thoughts where all the bliss and the beauty and where God is, the creator is beyond our thoughts. This is where all the insight is. This is where all the love is and the, and the, and the wisdom. So we have to go beyond thought to find that. We have to go beyond the ego because the ego will never understand. It's like a little child and the intellect and the thoughts are part of the ego that keep us in this world, that always keep us occupied with really unimportant to things. To be able to give that to my children, um, that's, a very, that's a very great blessing for me because this our children need that connection. They are the higher self. So when we as a parent connect with our higher self, we are the best example for our children and we can truly connect on the deepest level with our children and this was always my goal as well and raw food has helped me to be that parent to connect deeply lovingly with my children and that makes them a better 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 people they get all the emotional mental and physical support they need as children and to grow up as healthy adults it's not about forcing ourselves to be selfless it's a natural process because this is who we truly are we have to come back to it and raw food and meditation helps with that it's about surrendering to the moment to the flow of life and it's about letting go of our belief system, of, of our ego thoughts, of our negativity, of our impatience and our make our children more important than our anger, which is part of the ego. So the, when we have children, this is our kind of our job, you know, that it's our job. It's our job to raise our children the best we can, to train our children the best we can to give them boundaries because children love boundaries it's not about being a yes person it's not about always saying yes 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 if i know that in the future this will hurt my child for example if i know if i never tell my child to clean up their rooms if i you know i can help my child and show them how to clean up the room and make it fun it doesn't have to be like a, a controlling thing it has to come from empathy and creativity and love so i can tell my child you know let's clean up your room this is important and so because I know in the future they need to have that skill they need to be able to tidy up to be organized to study all these skills are very important for them in later life so these are the boundaries uh, with my children I wrote down different boundaries you know I said we do not yell at other people we do not do this we do not do that and they wrote it down when they were little and then, and then my son said do you have any more <laughs> because this is how they create their lives with these boundaries so if we tell them you know it's it's good to meditate and and because this will really help you with your concentration we don't force them 
but we tell them and we tell them why we meditate and we are an example so um, but we do our best to train them lovingly and with empathy and with creativity raw food and med meditation helps us to connect with our higher self and then we can really really fulfill our destiny in this life this life is very short um, you know we don't live a long time so we don't have a lot of time this is why when we meditate oh my god we will speed up our progress so much and we would be able to fulfill our soul's plan our destiny in this life and and raw food helps with that of course because we have no blockages we can work with our emotional issues with our mental issues with our physical issues and meditation uh, actually heals us on all levels at the same time so raw food and meditation are like this so if you want to be like a rocket uh, spiritually so that's 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 a good plan if you uh, some people never take off you know <laughs> they never take off they're just like blob 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 on this lower frequency until they die and then they have to come back and this happened to us many many lifetimes so this lifetime I don't want to go through the blob 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 again I want to go up you know as fast as I can raw food also helps us to detach um, maybe not detach yeah yeah detach from our five senses uh, we don't think it's so important any longer um, so but most people in this world in this ignorant world are led are, are pulled around by their five senses by their passions or of eating the best food drinking the best wine uh, luxury and all that so they are li like pulled so the five senses is really pulling pulling you along until you say no you know I don't want to be attached to this any longer so we have to master our five senses and we have to master our ego before we can be our true self before we can really fulfill the destiny of being one with our higher selves and being one with everybody um, so we have to master the five senses first there's a very good analogy that the five senses are the, the, the horses who pull us along and the ego is you know hitting the five horses and and the five senses and we are just pulled along so we have to become we have to become the driver of the wagon we have to become we have to pull the horses in and we have to control them so the control is comes with love and empathy we're not going to hurt ourselves we're not going to push and manipulate and it all has to come from love or it, or it's again the ego the ego wants to do everything with anger and with control and uh, the higher self is not intrusive it's all love so it's totally different when we are doing this from the higher self so the higher purpose of raw food is to help us become one with our higher selves and this will make us better people it will make us the best versions of ourselves better parents better humans more loving people unconditional loving people and then we realize that being selfless is a joy forgetting ourselves is a joy because who is that self it's the personality it's the ego so forgetting about the ego is really the greatest um, surrender and the greatest joy in this life um, it's wonderful thank you very much and have a good day